Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you this fun look I created for my birthday night out. We've got a lot to cover. We've got a lot of products to talk about, a lot of techniques to talk about. So let's just get right into the video. I've already pinned my hair back and I've got the perfume layering started. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Let's get the primer on so that I can start sinking into the skin because for a special occasion, especially, I wanna make sure my skin is well prepped and primed and ready to accept the makeup. Tried and true Old Faithful Tatcha Kisu Lip Mask. The first time I purchased the Tatcha Kisu lip mask, maybe three years ago now, I felt slightly underwhelmed, but now that I've like, I'm on my third little pot of it, I love it for prepping the lips. It does come with a little gold scoop. I'm the only person who uses this, so I just dip my finger in and go, I love it so, so much. I finished up my skincare routine about 20 minutes ago. There's a little bit of tack left, but not as much as I would like to start makeup. So I'm gonna take my MAC Fix Plus. This is the original scent. The glycerin, which is one of the highlight stars of the formula, functions as a humectant. It's gonna help pull moisture into the skin and plump up my skin and help it receive makeup a little bit easier. Finally ran out of my Hourglass Primer, so it's time to use a new primer, and I purchased an Old Faithful, the Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion. Years ago, when I was working at Sephora, so 2014, 2015, this was one of the first products I purchased for myself. I had always wanted to try the Urban Decay Primer Potion. It was something that all the beauty editors said the Urban Decay Primer Potion was one of the best of the best eyeshadow primers. But for me, it was one of those products that was pricey. I mean, Urban Decay is still a pricey brand, but now instead of feeling like a high-end luxury brand, it feels more of a mid-tier range because so many products have become more and more expensive. So this feels in the middle. All the different variations of the Urban Decay Primer Potion are really good. I've just always gone for the anti-aging. And for my under eyes, for a special occasion, I like the Smashbox Primerizer, and the Smashbox Primerizer functions like a moisturizer primer, hence the name, Primerizer. Under the eyes, it is a really lovely, because for a special occasion, I do like to go slightly heavier with my concealer. I like things to look a little bit brighter. Normally, I'm doing a little bit more on my eyes, so just to counteract any type of depth or darkness, I like to go a little bit more full coverage under the eyes. That way, it doesn't exasperate any darkness or color. The eye. So I want a little extra prep on the skin. For the rest of my face, my birthday was January 16th. We went out on the following Saturday, which is like the 20th. And it was very, very cold. It was, was like minus 15 Celsius. And I wanted to do a little bit of like what I call like my light bake. So that means there's more powder being added to my routine because since we were going to dinner, we were going to karaoke. Sometimes the little karaoke rooms can be very, very warm. And to avoid my makeup like sweating off, I wanted to make sure I was doing a little extra prep just to make sure everything was going to stay in place. So I want an extra hydrating primer. So I'm using the new Chanel Le Beige's Healthy Winter Glow Primer. This is in the shade Frosty White. This is the lightest of the three shades. Release is part of the limited edition Le Beige's collection. Really, really nice. Compared to all of the other primers I have in my collection, this reminds me of like a hybrid of something like Guerlain meteorite pearl primer and almost like a barrier bomb it's like a more liquid version of the CeraVe healing ointment it's got that kind of soothing nourishing feeling to the skin but it gives the skin a little bit of brightness like the Guerlain light revealing primer would and if you're gonna be putting powder down or any type of matte base it adds a nice kind of tack to it I really really enjoy this I just wish it wasn't limited edition because currently on the website it is listed as a limited product for the Chanel Le Beige's Winter Go collection. For those areas that are prone to getting shiny and greasy, I want to keep those as matte as I can. Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Primer. I only need a teeny tiny bit of this one on my nose, on the center of my chin, or the center of my forehead, and my chin, and anything left off right like through here. The hot spots for me that are prone to looking a little greasy. This is going to slightly overlap with the Chanel Le Beige's Primer. That's totally okay. Once you get the foundation foundation everything on, it will all even out as far as the appearance. And I always like to make sure I take any type of mattifying primer 
right here in the front portion and down to the nasal labial lines just because sometimes these areas can look really shiny in pictures and you know when you're going up for your birthday or a special occasion someone is going to have their phone there's the pictures and you want to make sure you're looking nice and fresh but not greasy in the pictures or mercy this is the deluxe sample size of the translucent loose powder work the powder into my brush then veil that powder i'm going to stipple all over my face over my eyelids and then any leftover product i'm just going to buff it in kind of help smooth the appearance of my skin reduce any type of oily shine from breaking through and once i get the foundation on it's going to add a little bit more of a velvety smooth finish if you are more on the normal to dry side be careful you might need to really up your hydration levels with your skincare and prep routine because this can make the skin look a little dry but if you are more on that normal to combination to oily side then you might find this adds a nice kind of a smooth velvety glow now i'm gonna move in to eyes that was the Elf Wow Brow in the shade Tote. Next, I'm gonna use the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Ash Blonde. Since I just filled in my brows with that tinted brow wax, I'm only gonna use the pencil just to fill in any areas that I want to thicken up a little bit. So for me, that's right here under the arch of my brow. And then for the very fronts of my brows, NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen in the shade Taupe. And this one, you have to use a very, very light hand. A few individual hair strokes. Brush and smooth, but once you get the kind of blending of the eyeshadow and everything, it really softens down quite a bit. Benefit 24 hour brow setter, and this is just gonna help hold everything in place. MAC Painterly Paint Pot. I am not sure what it was about my birthday this year, but the way everything came together, the group of people we had, everything just felt so wonderful. It relaxed, but it was still fun. It ended early. I think we ended at night at like 11 p.m. and it was great. Everyone was home and in bed at a decent time. It was just a really lovely, relaxed night. I'm gonna use a little bit more of the Laura Mercier powder, Real Techniques setting brush. I wanna use it just to go over the MAC Painterly Paint Pot fluff right over top of the eyebrows. I've really been loving creating what I call this like harmonious gradient makeup look that really reflects the colors I use on my face into the eyes. So I'm gonna start off with like my transitional bronzer contour shade and that's a pressed powder, One Size Beauty by Patrick Star. Turn up the base versatile powder foundation in shade Light 1R. I've used this powder quite a bit on my channel. I really, really love it. The shade, I really Originally about to use as a powder foundation, but it's a little dark and a little too rosy for my skin tone. But I find this is a powder foundation that I love to blur the lines between a contouring product and a bronzer product. It's about a shade to a shade and a half deeper than my skin. When I want to map something out, but I don't want it to be as warm as a bronzer or as cool as a contour, this works really, really well for laying down the groundwork. Laura Geller, Baked Bronze and Brighten in the shade Fair. See with the same brush, this is the BK Beauty A503. Follow that same placement I just laid down. And this is like my standard go-to eye placement. My eyes are slightly downturned and they are slightly hooded. Over the years, I have reduced the hooding of my eyelids because I do get a, what they call a Botox brow lift, which just helps to lift the placement of the brows ever so slightly. It's not gonna be as intense of a lift as if you got a surgical brow lift, but the Botox brow lift just helps to lift things ever so slightly. I've been getting that done for about five years now, and I found it's really helped to open up my eyes. Quick update, I'm noticing in the video when I'm talking about the brow lift I do with Botox. You can see I've got a little bit of bruising on my lips. A week before I recorded this video, I did go in for Botox and fillers. I did the brow lift, did the glabellar complex, dissolved my filler that I had in the upper lip, as well as the smile lines, re-injected my lips. And then I also had Botox injected into the crow's feet. And for the first time, I had some Botox injected into my nostrils and the bridge of my nose to kind of 
reduce the bulbosity of my nose and reduce the nasal flare. And also for the first time in my chin to kind of soften the appearance of my chin and kind of reduce some dimpling I've noticed in my chin. And I will more than likely go back in another six months to a year like I have been for the last several years. So just an update on why I'm bruised and if anything looks a little different. So full transparency back to the video. That being said, just with the way my eyes are shaped and the kind of fatty pad in the lid, they are still slightly downturned. You can see that outer corner of my eye, they're slightly down. And then when I relax my eye, there's still this fatty pad right here. So I'd like to add just a little bit of shape, and a little definition, and using the bronzer will add some warmth to the eyes. Adding that little bit of warmth here around the perimeter of my eye. It's just gonna make the eyes kind of stand out. I'm gonna use my contour powder. This is from the brand Can Make Shading Powder in 05 Moon Grayish. BK Beauty A502. If I take a little handheld mirror, if I relax, look straight ahead, I can look and see where I want to add. So I like to lift my chin, look down, remember that placement. I want to put the contour shade, coolest of the three shades that we just applied. And since it's cooler and slightly deeper, it's going to cause it this area to recede from the eye. So it's gonna look like it's pushing back. Contour my socket. It's also help me create the illusion of a rounder eye shape. You can just do this all with your eyeshadow palette, but I like to mimic the shades I'm using in my facial makeup with my eye makeup. I have a feeling that the eyeshadow palette I use will be very, very predictable for the regular viewers of the channel. If you think you know which eyeshadow palette I used, pause the video, leave me a comment letting me know what palette you think it is, and let's see if you got it right. Huda Beauty Rose Quartz. I love this palette so much much and anytime there's a special occasion, event, party, whatever, this is the go-to palette. It always impresses me how many shades from the palette I actually end up using. It's me we're talking about, I'm gonna use a pink blush because I always use some type of pinky blush. First shade I'm gonna use is something a little bit more rosy to mimic whatever blush I apply later. Since I'm gonna use a pink blush, I want to mix together Cherish and Happiness, BKBD A503. And I want a little bit more of the Cherish, which is the light pink shade. Run this right over top of everything we just applied. Focus here on the outer corner. Light, hazy glow to the eyes. And since it's overlapping those more skin tone adjacent shades that we just laid down, it's I feel like the pink is more multi-dimensional than just being now I want to add a little bit more contour and here is where I had the most fun putting this look together. For the night when I was getting ready, I couldn't quite decide which shade I wanted to use. So I ended up using a mix of Precious, Serenity, and Radiate. The BKBD A502, I just dipped in all three. And I remember I did an extra little dip in the shade Serenity, which is gonna be a little bit more of a mauve shade. Always like to think about where I want the depth to be. Since I'm going for a slightly rounded, lifted look, I want the deepest point of my eye to be right out here. Find where I want that depth to be. Tilt my chin up, stretch the area out. I'm gonna use a light hand, etch that in, work to round. And I only take this about halfway, maybe a little bit past halfway. And then sometimes I even like to take my brush and just stamp. Then I'll go back to my windshield wiper motion, maybe buff a little bit. Adds just enough color, almost like we created a new socket line. It just makes the eye look a little bit lifted, a little bit more rounded. Now most days I felt like I would leave this here, maybe put a little bit of something shimmery on the eyes and call it a day. Now, one of my favorite shades in the palette is the jelly shade called Love Stone. Press this right over my lid, focusing on the inner corner of my eye and working across. It almost feels like it's like a Vaseline or Petrol on base in it. And when you blend and work the shade, the pearls break up and it creates just a really beautiful kind of shimmery, slightly tacky base. And when you put a shimmer shadow on top, it is just really, really lovely. Taking a quick break from our eyeshadow palette, I want to use my powder highlight. And the powder highlight I used for the evening, I don't know if I featured on my channel, I purchased this during the Autumn Sephora Beauty Insider Sale. Rare Beauty Positive Light Powder Highlighter in the shade Enlighten. And I'm gonna use my large fluffy blending brush. And with this shade, I want to place my brightness in the inner corner and then gently swirl, loosening up on my pressure as I come towards that highlight, or sorry, as I come towards the contour shade. I want the most brightness to be here here, but I want to give it more of a 3D appearance. So as I lighten my pressure, it will sheer out a little bit. Because if you think about anything that has a low 
glow or depth will have a highlight or contour. So if you think about a sphere being lit where the light source is hitting it, that will be the brightest point. So that's gonna be the highlight here. And then when, as it curves and goes away from the light, it looks like it's pushing back, it's drawing away, it's receding. So that's gonna be the contour. So I want the light source to hit here and then recede as it goes out here. This part of the makeup routine kind of started going off the rails compared to what I thought I was gonna do. The DK Beauty A501, the shade Self Love, but I focused on the lighter. And this I layered right over top of the highlighter into the inner quarter of my eyes. The shade is, it's a split pan marbled shadow. So it has this pale beige into like more of a rose gold copper. And when they mix, you get a little bit more of a pinkiness. And I wanted to use this to overlap the Rare Beauty highlight to tie into the slightly cooler appearance of the rest of the shadow. And then I was like, I want more. The shade Blissful, same brush. And I use this here on the center of the eyelid, working towards the lower lash line, almost used it as a rough eyeliner sketch. Deeper portion of the shade Cosmic Love. I have added that here on the outer corner and anything left over, I brought towards the center. The shade Moon Magic. This was just kind of like my median shade. So this is what I used to tie in previous shades and worked all over the lid. And as I got less of my brush, it moved out and got wider within the place Sephora Collection 12 hour full color eye pencil in the shade 33 Love Affair Aubergine color. So it's going to give me some contrast without feeling as heavy as black, but it's also going to have a little bit of that purple red, which has helped to contrast and really brighten up my green eyes. Once I got my tight line on, I felt like I needed a little something to the upper lash line. My small angled brush, this is the BK Beauty number 208, a little bit of the shade of Mantra, which is a deep plum gray. And I just wanted to put a little bit of this here on the very outer corner of my eye. And then I flip my brush to where the long thin end is going up. Now that I have less of my brush, I'm gonna slightly lift and extend and pull that back in. You're almost creating a wing, but it's so soft. We're gonna smudge it out so it's gonna look hazy. So instead of looking like a true wing, it's gonna look like just a subtle shaded lift to the eye. The A504 in the shade Empowered, buff over the previous shade. Planning out my birthday, I knew I wanted to add a little bit of a lash, but I wasn't sure what type of lash. I don't normally like the look of a strip lash. Putting on individuals is a little too fiddly and I get frustrated and then I say, never mind. And then I take off the lashes and end up with little bits of glue for the rest of the night. It's not fun. So then I was like, let's try out something like the lashes that went under under the lash line. So I purchased the Kiss Falscara starter kit. The lashes looked great online. When they arrived, they just looked a little too dense and a little too heavy. One day when I was at the mall, I was in Skoshi Mart, which is an Asian beauty store here in Toronto. And I ran across these lashes from the brand Mishi Bloomin. Style is N09 Nudie Brown. Here is how they look. So what I did is I took a strip, cut it up, four little pieces. I started off by curling my lashes. I'm using the Refer Lash Curler. I found it's easiest to start with one eye and then move on to the other. Kiss Falscara Base. I'm using the side that says Bond. Since I'm not putting the lash all the way around, I'm focusing more on the center. I just want to focus this here on middle of my eye. This kit comes with this great little lash applicator. So what I like to do is just tilt my chin up, go from under the lash line and press up. Seal that into place. Half lash curler from Revlon. Right over where I apply the lash, gently tap into place. That way it helps to lift it. And also now the height of my eye slightly outside of center. So that way it gives my eyes the usual of looking bigger and more kind of up and out. Now eyes are on and everything else is pretty much easy and downhill from here. Before I move that, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about my fragrance layering combination. And to start my fragrance layering combination, I knew the perfume I wanted to wear was one that I treated myself to as a 1500 subscriber milestone. This is from Mouage. This is Lilac Love Gourmand Floral. We'll talk more about this in just a moment. When I was getting ready, I was like, what could I layer and put together that would boost the scent and just make it feel more of like a pampering luxurious routine? That's when I came up with the idea to mix together Bath & Body Works Body Cream Ballet Nights. This has notes of wild plum, 
Plum Glowing Amber and Tonka Cream with the Body Shop's Black Musk. This is a very warm, musky, vanillic scent. So combined together, this creates a really warm, cozy, slightly vanillic musk base for the perfume to be applied later. For my foundation base, I'm starting off with the Aura Glow Lust in the shade Morganite. And I'm gonna use my foundation brush. This is the It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe number seven. I'm gonna apply that up high on my cheekbones and pull it into the temple. The way I did the rest of my base makeup really didn't make sense to me because it's not a routine I normally follow, but I ended up really loving it. Number one to Chanel lip and cheek color in the shade Purple Energy, number nine, Rare Beauty Cream Blush Brush. I love this shade. Sometimes it can be a little intense, especially if I've applied it a little too heavy, but I've found using it under has been really, really lovely. I'm applying it in this like dramatized placement that really really helps to mimic a kind of wind bird, wind flush look, which is slightly triangular. So it really plays into this like cool wintry air that we are currently experiencing in Toronto. Here on the chin, nose, whatever's left in the back of my hand mixed with the Auric Glow Lust here on the sides of the forehead. And you can see this is already helping to pick up some of those pinky purple tones in the eyes and just make things feel a little bit more harmonious. Bobbi Brown Stick Corrector in the shade Light Disc. Right here under my eyes where I want to neutralize some of the under eye hollowing. Right up, especially since I'm working with more purple and pinks around my eyes, that kind of exaggerate the blue purple tones over here. Also, any type of stubble shadowing I can get will run through here. It Cosmetics Foundation Brush. As we're starting to apply some more coverage related products, you can go through and clean up and soften down that cream blush placement. With it being under everything else, it's going to make it feel more at one with the skin. I've spoke on my channel quite a bit about how I love enhancing and embracing some of the natural imperfections that most people have in our skin, like redness or things like that. It adds character to the face and it just makes things just feel more kind of cute and carefree in my I like to take makeup, enhance those little traits and qualities of the skin and just make them feel more part of the look. NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the shade Vanilla. I know I'm gonna apply foundation so I don't need to use much of this right now which is why this whole applying my concealer this stuff didn't make sense to me but once you've already started it's kind of hard to stop thinking about anywhere I would normally apply my concealer after foundation but this time I just did it before foundation and normally I would never advise to do this because when you apply your concealer before your foundation apply more than you actually need I'm getting a little anxious because I've talked before I do get like social anxiety and even I'm going out with my friends. It can still feel a little nerve-wracking. It can make you feel a little anxious, nervous, and maybe slightly panicked. <laughs> so I wasn't thinking in the normal way I would, but everything turned out really well. And I remember once I finished all of the little bits of concealing and things like that, I was like, oh, I don't really need foundation after all, but I'm like, no, we're gonna put the foundation on anyway. Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer, the shade 1.5 Yogurt Drops. I love this concealer so much. It is so smoothing. This is the closest shade match to my skin, but for every day, it can feel a little too intense, a little too bright. But when I want to brighten up my face and almost contour with light, this is one of the most beautiful concealers I've tried. You just need to make sure you're not using too much. It might look like I'm applying a lot, but I'm just tapping the applicator around and it's making the product look a little bit more diffused than it would be if I kind of striped it on. So it looks like you're applying more than you really are. But once you blend it out, it's just kind of like, oh, that's really pretty. It's not too much after all. Foundation brush again. Let's start on my chin where I want to brighten. I want to round out the ball of the chin, center of the forehead. This will help to kind of soften the look of the brow ridge because I just like to soften up the interior portion of my face. And then moving on to sides of my nose, I really like to press 
my brightening shade here on the side of my nose as it will help to expand the interior portion of the cheek and narrow out the bridge of the nose. So you're almost contouring the light versus with depth. And then I'll blend out and lift up to the temple and that will help to round the appearance of the temple. And the whole time I'm doing that, I'm just slightly stamping over, spreading out. So that way you're also kind of helping to highlight and round out the top of the cheek. Now we do have the Auric Glow Lust Illuminator on under the concealer and blush. So that's adding a little bit of glow, but everything all together just makes everything just feel very kind of fresh and alive and very at one. For foundation, I went tried and true number one Chanel Revitalizing Red Camellia Foundation in the shade BR12. And I remember I took about half a pump and I just started dotting it in the places where I did not apply my concealer. Worked whatever was left in the back of my hand into my brush and I just began patting and blending out. Sometimes it's so fascinating how when things don't go as they normally would, you slightly deviate from the way you would normally do things. It turns out way better than what you were anticipating. And I just remember the entire night, anytime I got a glimpse of how I looked coupled with how I felt, just being with my friends, having a great time, it just felt like everything came together just perfectly how it was meant to be all along. Such a wonderful evening and I just felt great. Damp beauty sponge, just go back over all of the liquid and cream base we just applied. This is just gonna help pick up any excess product and mesh everything into the skin. Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder, Ultra Blur in the shade Translucent. I really wanted to try it, refer number 22. And I just used this to set down my base and I was really thrilled with how this looked. And it's fascinating because I, you know, for years people in all different places within the beauty sphere have raved about the Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Powder and I love it for kind of doing like a primer step under my foundation base, but I've never liked it to set everything down with. So far, this Loose Translucent Ultra Blur Powder is really, really lovely. Can make moon gray contour powder and we are going to start adding a little bit of contour and shape. I did go a lot heavier with contour than I normally would and I loved it. Towards the going from like the tragus up, working up and back and I'm almost coming down to the corner of my eye. We're slightly angling it down but I'm keeping it a little bit more straight because since my face is longer than it is wide, I do want to kind of shorten the appearance of my face. Whatever I have left, I'm going to blend down. Now this is also a slightly newer technique. I normally just kind of keep contour straight line because that's what I learned in school and just what I've seen for years. I was watching a video the other day about how Key Station Beauty, a lot of times they will contour down at an angle as it helps to kind of achieve that more V-line jaw shape. But what that does is it gives the optical illusion of shading the face and kind of slimming down this lower portion. I am a big fan of slimming down areas of concern until I finish losing weight. I I think I have found my new favorite trick. This isn't gonna be something you will see me using like my everyday makeup life because with this much contouring, unless you have like long hair that kind of covers the side of your face, this can just feel a little too stark. So I wanna keep it kind of here on the sides, feather down the neck, and then I'm gonna use my powder brush to soften over that again. Rare Beauty Highlight, and I'm gonna use the Rare Beauty Highlighting Brush. When I first received this in the mail from my Sephora order, it really threw me off. It's a lot more pigmented than I was expecting. If you take it and apply a little bit and then work on spreading out, I'm using my powder brush again just to go through and sheer it out a little bit more. You can still see the glow. It just makes it look a little bit more creamy on the skin. This does contrast my skin tone a little bit, that little bit of yellow it does help it kind of come forward and brighten up the appearance of the skin. Using it under my like blush, bronzer, things like that, it helps to 
add a little bit of liveliness back to the complexion, but it also creates a really prominent glow. Now I'm gonna use the very point of my little e.l.f. small taper brush, and I want to tie into the contour I did here on the inner portion, and then around the nose, a little bit left over here on the nostril to slim down that a little bit. The one size, turn up the base versus the powder foundation, and shade and light 1R with my big refer 22. Like I mentioned earlier, this is be like my transitional bronzer contour shade. I've already applied my highlight and my powder contour. So slightly above that contour and below the highlight, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of this hair. It's a warm things, uh, Laura Geller baked bronze and brighten in the shade fair. Add a little bit of glow to the skin. So I'm gonna go higher on the cheek, work into the forehead, here on the nose, on the chin. So if you're like me, you live in Canada, you're not getting a lot of sun, it gets dark early in the day and you're just pale, but you wanna wear a bronzer but you don't wanna look too heavy. I like using a big fluffy brush. And as you notice when I get to the cheeks, instead of going back and forth like this, I do this almost like Put it on top of the cheekbone, almost overlapping the highlight, and brush down. It's going to hug the upper curve of the cheek, and it's just gonna make the bronzer feel a little bit more realistic. I want to brighten up the interior portion of my face. Here you pair up Pure Sunshine Cheek in number 20, Cloudy Pink. It Cosmetics Heavenly Lux number seven blush brush. And this is a split plan of like a blue and a pink. Mix them together, and I'm gonna use this here as an expanding shade to kind of carry out that highlight highlighter I applied and start tying into my blush. Again, I always take this right here on the side of the nose because the blue and the pink mixed together, it really closely mirrors, you know, my skin tone. So it's going to help slim down the appearance of the width of my nose and it's to start tying into the cheek color that we're gonna apply. Now I'm gonna apply a slightly deeper blush to snack, like my contouring blush. Thank goodness the new Bobbi Brown blushes are out and this shade did return. This is the previous formula and the shade shade Sand Pink, which is still available. I did get to swatch the new Bobbi Brown blushers, and they seem pretty similar to the existing formula, so I feel okay about using the older ones until they run out and I repurchase the newer ones. With the shade Sandy Pink, I am going over top of the bronzer on the back half of the face. This is going to add more rosiness to the cheek, and this is going to really kind of play up that full flush look. If you're someone who has a very cool toned appearance, meaning your hair, your your eyes, your skin tone are all cool tone, and you just find no matter what you do, a bronzer to look too heavy, take a shade of blush like this. So this was Bobbi Brown Sand Pink. You can use it on its own or mix it with a powder foundation that is a shade deeper than your skin to make your own bronzer shade. And it will just help give you that appearance of warmth and flush to the skin without looking orange. So that's great if you're someone who is a like a true cool summer or true cool winter. The main star of the show and kind of like my hood Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. When I need a fail-safe blush, I reach the same one time and time again. Kind of like Cyndi Lauper time after time. That's the Dior Rosy Go Blush. This is the older formula. This is not the one that's currently being sold, but I have it. I feel like a lot of you still have it because it was so popular. I use this here on the center portion of my cheek and it just adds the most beautiful glow. It's just the most beautiful blush. A trick that I love, I see a lot within like Korean and Chinese beauty trends is I like to take my large blending brush, a little bit of my blush shade. So this is the Dior Rosy Glow, and I am just going to blush right over the upper lip, focusing on Cupid's bow. And that's just going to help kind of create the appearance of a shorter filtrum, which is the vertical line right here from the tip of the nose to the top of the lip. For lip pencil, I'm gonna use the Daisy Mood Blur Lip Pencil, and this is in the shade number five ink shoe. And I will say by this point in the makeup routine, I was like, okay, I need to hurry up and leave though. It was just a quick, I think I filled in the entire look with this pencil. Roman Dewy Full Water Tint, and this is in the shade number 11, Lilac Cream took a tissue and blotted it down. I think in my last video that went up was where I was talking about the makeup bag I had packed and some of the new products I purchased. I was looking for my Rouge Cocoa Lip Balm in the shade 938 Keep Cool from the La Beige's Winter Glow Collection. It was in a bag. I found it. I used it for my birthday makeup and I love this. It's almost a clear balm with like this silvery pearl. 
It's almost like a silvery beige pearl. I love it so much. It doesn't do a lot. It's not the most impactful. I mean, of the two Rouge Coco Bombs I have from the Le Beige's Winter Glow Collection, these two are bar by far the most sheer compared to the other Rouge Coco Bombs, but I still love them. For mascara, I used a little bit of this Max Factor X 2000 Calorie Dramatic Volume Mascara, and this is in the shade Black Brown. And this mascara was actually gifted to me from one of my really dear friends, and she brought this back for me on her trip to Berlin. And I just ran a little bit over. I do have that faux lash on, so I just want to use this to kind of fuse them together and just bump up the rest of my lashes. When I was here to head out, I was like, I want to add a little something else because this, this feels a little too subtle for what I like. Rose Quartz Highlighter. This is from House Labs, a cosmetics blush brush. Tapped here on the high point and just reinstate a little bit more glow wrapped over whatever's left here on the bridge. Smooth over with my powder brush again. MAC Fix Plus Stay Over. This is the makeup look I wore for my birthday. I'm gonna insert a little video if I can of me and one of my friends from the karaoke bar. We were having such a great time. And when I saw that video, like I had the makeup on for like six hours by that point. I'm like, things still look really, really good. So I was very impressed by that. Let's finish off with perfume. Earlier that day, I had received a Sephora order in the mail that I placed with some little goodies that I treated myself to for my birthday. And one of them is from Juliet Has a Gun Musk Invisible. I've owned a few few different Juliet Has a Gun perfumes so far. I think favorite one has to be Magnolia Bliss with Not A Perfume coming in second. I've also owned Not A Perfume Superdose. It was just a little too intense for me. I was very curious when I ran across Musk Invisible and Fragrantica. It's beautiful and I love musk scents or creating a base for other fragrances. Star of the show, Amouage Lilac Love. The presentation of Amouage fragrances are just so, so beautiful. Inside is the fragrance. And I love these magnetic lids. And then here it has a little matching purple stone when you get that initial first impression. There is something very chocolatey, which makes so much sense to me when I read the notes and saw that cacao powder was one of the notes in this. And there's a little bit of that vanillic base. Yes, you are getting a little bit of enhancement of the vanillic base from the Ballet Nights and the Black Musk from Body Shop. Worn without those, you still get this kind of chocolate vanilla mix. I think this also has rose in it. There is a little bit of this like soft laurelness. It's not too, too, floral like you definitely get more of those like cozy bouquet of flowers with the cocoa and the vanilla there's also a little bit of a creaminess that smells like sandalwood and there's also something that reminds you of like freshly made whipped cream it is such a really beautiful it's a warm cozy gourmand with a floral twist to it it is so so beautiful and i've smelled all of the i think it's called the secret garden collection from Mouage that it also consists of Love Tuberose, Blossom Love, and Mimosa Love. I, I really love all of them. The Mimosa is the one I'm on the fence with, but the Blossom Love and the Love Tuberose are definitely two that I need in my collection at some point. Amouage is a very, very pricey brand. I believe here this is around $500 Canadian. And I did say I treated myself to this bottle when I hit 1,500 subscribers. It just so happened to be, I think it was September or October of last year, so 2023. Joan Mashop, which is a US-based website they have some discount fragrances they had lilac love for 180 us dollars which is like what 60 percent off retail so i purchased this for myself and they don't ship to canada so i had to ship it to my parents and then it stayed at my parents until christmas when my husband wrapped it up and gave it to me for christmas so i am so excited to have this i wore this out for christmas day with my friends i wore this out for my birthday i've worn it here and there it's just such a really beautiful elegant yet warm and cozy floral scent that makes me so so happy and it lasts all day all day all night like if you wear this you don't shower or it's on clothes or something on clothes it will last for days like I believe like after I wore the shirt I did laundry like Wednesday we went on Saturday and this shirt when I took it to put it in the little garment bag to wash it it still smelled like lilac love I'm very curious how long this video will be after I edit it currently I've been talking 
for like an hour and 26 minutes. And when I was doing my makeup on the night of, it took me right at about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit less to get everything done. So I'm very curious to see how this will go once I edit it. And I cannot wait to see all of your comments. I had such a great time and I'm so excited to embark on, on the 34th year of my life. So cheers to 2024 and I hope it's treating all of you well so far. I hope you enjoy this look. Let me know your thoughts, comments, and any other fun things you want to say in the comments. Until next time, I hope you're taking care of yourself wherever it is you are in the world. I will see you later. Bye y'all.